Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we are going to be reviewing and reacting, I guess, to the latest developer Q&A feedback round number seven. And as always, you can find these on the official COD Discord. If you need to know where to go, you go here to the support category, dev feedback, you click on the one you want to look at, and then I like to always do this, open in full view. Uh, just so we have everything filled out into a standard channel. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you because it helps out a lot. Let's go ahead and start off. Uh, question one, why has the season talent cavalry vanguard been changed? The anniversary update added a city theme with a cavalry buff, but the update notification said that the cavalry, that cavalry were going to be made weaker. Answer, daily double. Uh, we've discovered that melee units are currently not of much use in battle, and their purpose is not entirely clear. In order to give cavalry units a suppressive effect against ranged legions, we strengthened the unyielding rush skill in V1.023, Greatly increasing rush, dis uh, rush strength and distance. Rush distance now exceeds the range of magic units, which is very far. And rushing also ignores enemy obstructions. However, we later discovered that the seasoned talent cavalry vanguard introduced a number of unintended balancing, uh, balance breaking effects, such as allowing cavalry to pass over mountains and rivers and charge at excessive distances and speeds. So basically, they were dosing the work of the horses and at the same time giving them wings right so pretty much they were drinking red bull let's just be honest and acting like celestials and uh, as though they were running in the kentucky derby so yeah that sounds pretty game breaking if if you will uh these effects were not con uh, conducive to cavalry units position in combat and were just in 1.0.24 while testing this version we concluded that this adjustment did not affect cavalry units use in battle against range units we welcome players feedback on this issue we also discovered an issue when the season town cavalry vanguard would not apply to elk riders we currently we are currently considering design another season town specifically for elk riders so please stay tuned so let's kind of go uh, do this one by one right so I think the idea of like melee units are not currently of much use and their purpose is not entirely clear. Like, it could be clear. Let me explain how the unit types can be so much clearer. If you just have a hard counter system, right? This is not a difficult thing. Traditional RTSs do this already, uh, right? Where, again, it would be something as an example. It could be, you know, cavalry beats, or sorry, infantry beats cavalry, cavalry beats archers and mages, um, celestials beat infantry uh or sorry no uh, excuse me it would be yeah like archers and mages beat celestials celestials beat infantry right like it would it would have to be something like that uh right or you do each one right it could be like infantry beats cav cav beats archers archers beats beats mage mage beats celestial celestials beat infantry well, however you want to do it but if you had more of a pure hard counter system Right, and let's be real. The challenge with this is that you have two ranged units. You have archers and mages. If they just had one ranged unit, it'd be a lot easier, right? Because you could say infantry beats cav, cav beats ranged, ranged beats flying, flying beats infantry. Like this would not be a difficult thing to do. Uh, so, you know, it's just to say that if you have, if you come up with a harder counter system, meaning that the damage you do. So, like an example would be like this: if infantry beats cav. It would mean that the only way Cav could ever beat Infantry is if there was like two or three tier level differences, right? Like it would have to be that kind of level of punish where it's not as though they're getting nuked, but it's not as though they're winning anything, right? So you would say the damage, like if you're looking at the current amount of damage and the current, because the way the system works now is that you have increased damage on the unit you have an advantage on, and then you have, and then you also take reduced damage from them. So what I would say is increase those numbers, increase the damage dealt, maybe not, not maybe, maybe not double, but increase it a bit, and then also increase the re the reduction in damage that you take. So this way, again, the counter system is harder than what it currently is. I think to me that actually sounds like a a better overall first step compared to doing a lot of these kind of band aid fixes or workaround adjustments when we just really need to address the root of it all. Uh, which is the increased damage and damage reduction from the counter system. Then we get to uh, Calvary Vanguard. So let's read that off. I think I have this here uh, already up. So let's see where this is. So Calvary Vanguard, uh, when your Calvary units launch an unyielding rush to the target unit, rush speed is increased by 20%. Each time your cavalry units successfully rush a ranged unit, their attack is raised by 2.5%, max 10% for 10 minutes. Timer resets each 
time effect is triggered. Okay, so that's your unyielding rush. Uh, or excuse me, your cavalry vanguard. <laughs> uh, right, and then they said, right, it ended up introducing, so they ended up uh, adjusting in point two four. That's the most recent update that hit, and then that's where they kind of eventually found out the cavalry vanguard, uh, how it didn't really affect the elk riders. And my view on elk riders simply is, and this, this, I don't think this is a hot take or or, or any kind of intense view. My view is my view is simple. Just make elk riders close range. Just make them what every other cavalry unit is, right? When you start doing these things where, like, for example, you don't see infantry being able to attack at range. You don't see celestials, you know, defaulting or having a secondary option, right? Where it's like, oh, yeah, instead of making celestials very far, we're going to make them very, very far, right? Or we're going to make celestials attack in hand-to-hand -hand combat, even though it's a ranged unit, right? It's just like you don't have these kind of off things, that, right? They do what they do. You have two out of three cavalry units right now for the three factions that operate as traditional cavalry does, but then you have one that is a short-range cavalry, right? And it's And I'm not saying don't introduce the unit. What I'm saying is be consistent and if you're going to introduce a ranged cavalry unit, then do it for every faction. It's that simple. So yeah, that's my view. I personally think it's a hot take. I think that's a cold take. Uh, more like a rational take. <laughs> uh, additionally, we would like to remind you that in update 1.0.24, the automatic adjustment of melee and ranged legion positions during march feature is enabled. By default, for lords aiming to optimize the combat experience. When multiple legions are marching simultaneously... The game will automatically adjust Legion formations based on range and speed. They did mention this in the, in the patch notes. During this adjustment process, there may be instances where cavalry moves slower than infantry. This is unrelated to their base speed, but rather our feature function. Lords can manually disable this feature or operate uh, with a single troops. Now, again, my, my view on that one is that... To me, it just why I guess I'm, I'm I am slightly confused here. Why can you not have them move at the same speed with the feature enabled versus when the feature is disabled, right? And maybe I'm missing something there. But if this is just a formation uh, effect, then why can't the formation move at the same at the same base speed that the calves that the units would if the feature is disabled, right? Especially if it's if it's if it's only calves. Right, as an example. Like, I can understand you moving at the speed of the lowest unit if you have a mix, uh, right, example, in your formation setup. But if you're running nothing but Cavan, maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Uh, but those are just my thoughts. Next one. Uh, will the migration system be improved to relieve pressure on servers? Uh, answer. Wow, this is intense stuff. I've uh, got good questions here. We understand that some players have been unable to join their allies while migrating as their destination server is full. We are committed to increasing server migration limits in a fair and equitable way, and we welcome player feedback regarding any difficulties or design issues you may encounter in the migration process as well. To be fair, that is nice to hear that there are plans to increase limits, even though we know that they have already. What would be better is, as it pertains to you asking for player feedback regarding difficulties and design issues or design issues you may encounter, we need to know what the design issues are. We need to know what the designs are. We need to know what the details are. We need to actually know the finer points of what the migration prog uh, process fully entails in order to give appropriate feedback, right? You can't ask for feedback but not let us know what are all the specific factors, giving us examples of different activity status servers and then just allowing for us to have a little bit more insight in order to give quality feedback. Sure, anyone can give feedback, but as a developer, you want quality feedback. You want the best feedback you possibly can get. And in order for that to happen, we need to have as much information as possible about how the system operates and how it works. So first and foremost, we just need more information. Uh, question three, will it be possible to exchange speed up items for other in-game items once you max out buildings or research and will you uh, introduce ways to spend excess resources? Recently, we have received feedback from players regarding consumption of excess items and we are looking into ways that players can make use of excess resources. These plans are still in the design stage, but we'll notify you as soon as they've been finalized. Keep an eye out. So this is, again, this echoes what we've already heard uh, in similar uh, Q&As. Uh, and we know that they are working on something to trade in uh, universal heads for 
com- uh, for heroes. Uh, we also know that they have mentioned before on looking to do things, for example, like if you've maxed out buildings, what can I do with my building speed ups? We also know that they've hinted at this already, that they're working on something. So this is nice that they're just kind of double tripling down and staying in line with that. There's no backpedaling that's going on. They're saying, yes, we are working on this and you know we'll give you some more information once we get to a, a more appropriate stage. Okay, uh, question four. Uh, are you planning to make improvements to Behemoths, for example, changing their summoning animations or reducing the difficulty? Uh, so we already know that they're changing summoning animations. They actually addressed this in a previous uh, Q&A. Uh, but they say here, answer in 1.0, uh, sorry, 1.0.24. We have removed Legion limits for standard Behemoth raids in the hopes of decreasing difficulty in uh, the difficulty. In V, oh, wow, on the next update, in V, wow, they actually talk about this. In V1.0.25, we are planning to introduce a gathering stone, which allows players to quickly teleport to the battlefield for GVE. What is GVE? Why can't we just say PVE? I don't get it. Uh, gameplay. Future updates will also make adjustments to raid difficulty in order to allow more alliances to enjoy raids and capture their own behemoths. I mean, this is great. This is exactly what we have been talking about. What I've mentioned multiple times is that players who uh, play uh, every every player as a free to play. If you have a if you have a pure free to play alliance, you should be able. To capture, if you're active, let's be clear, if you are a free-to-play, if, if, if you're an alliance and all you have is free-to-play players in it, but you're active, everyone contributes or you have a high percentage that contributes, uh, and you should be able, that alliance should be able to capture every single behemoth in every season... For the, for, the, for the initial rate, right, for the initial attack, for the initial rate, I'll say, right? Not the elite, but just the standard rate. Why? Because... Why would you not allow people to enjoy the entirety of the game? It's like playing a story mode, but but you're only able to actually do half the story mode because uh, it's too difficult, right? You haven't you haven't bought enough in-app purchases in this campaign-based game in order to be strong enough to actually go and, and finish off the rest of the story mode bosses. No, that's not how it works, right? If I'm reading a book, I get to read the book through all the chapters, right? It's not like all of a sudden I have to pay to read other chapters, and that's kind of how it feels like is that every single behemoth and every single season should be scaled based on what an alliance of 100% free-to-play players can do and achieve. Elite raids, you want to do two, three, four, five levels of elite raids, and you want to have those be something that you just, again, need to either, you need to be stronger for, where players can do those things early if they spend money, that's totally fine. But at least allow people to enjoy the baseline version of the game. So... That's my passionate answer there. I do like this idea, though, of the Gathering Stone in the next update that's going to allow players to quickly teleport to the battlefield. And even though I'm blanking on what G means, I'm just going to give a hopeful assumption that this means that they'll be able to teleport to Behemoths. Um, We actually have a question coming out. There's a question, a really good question that we ask in our King's Guard uh, questionnaire form that actually speaks on this. And I think some of you will be uh, excited when you do read some of the answers to that. Uh, we have also made improvements uh, to enjoy raids. Also, future updates will also make... Yeah, they already said that. Uh, we will also we have also made improvements to information displays during Behemoth raids, the graphical improvements to Behemoth summoning. We've received a lot of suggestions from players regarding Behemoths and will be holding more Behemoth raid events in the future, as well as updating related features, so watch the space. That's great. I actually like that. That's really nice to hear. Uh, here we go. Next question. Can engineering heroes receive EXP based on how much time they spend working on a building? They already answered this. They said they're working on this, uh, for the talent tree. Uh, after careful consideration, we have made plans to make improvements regarding this issue, uh, at issues such as improving improvements to engineering related talents that will allow engineering heroes to receive EXP based on how much time they spend working on a building. Keep an eye out. Again, fantastic feature that we cannot wait until that comes out. I love how we're diving in a little bit more, uh, into this role type, this role based type gameplay. Uh, from COD, and I think it's a great direction to go down. Uh, uh, Next question. How often will the Lucky Flip event be held? Will new heroes be made available through the event? We were pleased to see the amount of feedback we received from players regarding the Lucky Flip event. In order not to devalue existing game content where players can gain new heroes as a reward, such as Strongest Lord event, the Lucky Flip will event, uh, event will only offer already summoned heroes as a reward for the same reason. Lucky Flip event will not be held frequently. Thank you for understanding. Okay, so personally... If they don't want to hold an event like this that frequently, eh, okay. My view simply is just do better than this Lucky Flip event and what I said. I don't personally feel that this is a matter of heroes being devalued. I actually, and I will respectfully say I think that's a cop-out, and I'm gonna, and let me explain why. 
because that for them to say that means that they want to kind of hold on to the gatekeeping of uh, paid gating content as it pertains uh, mostly to heroes, but in other regards as well. Uh, and so when you have heroes that you can only unlock through paid means or through premium currency means, again, right, and, and those heroes are always there, meaning free-to-play will never be able to get them, right, particularly for specifically, we should say, for the ones that actually cost money, right, it is a bit unfortunate. And I, I personally don't think that's a way of devaluing it. Like I've said before, my view, simply put, is every single hero should be able to be, everything should be able to be acquired in this game via free-to-play means. There should never be anything that is 100% locked or paywall-gated. And as it, and as in regards to heroes, I've said this before, heroes should all be eventually added at some point, not removed from other areas, such as premium currency or paid or paid means, but they should be added to gold chests. Every single hero, right? Now, again, if it's uh, maybe if it's purple, right? I think they still go to they can still go to free. But if it's legendaries, every legendary hero, once they're released after a, after a period of time has elapsed, should then just be added to gold chest. It's that simple, man. You want to you want to talk about making you want to talk about taking the next step and having a more free to play friendly game than other kingdom builders. I don't know any kingdom builder on the market right now. Uh, and maybe there is one, right? people can let me know, but I'm just not aware of one where every single hero is unlockable and after a period of time they go to the gold chests so that way everyone can have unlock them over a period of time. Now keep in mind, even if they end up doing that, it's not as though free-to-play is going to be able to all of a sudden max out these heroes in a week. Okay, let's be realistic here, <laughs> right? Is that it's still going to take them a, a, a decently long time. But the fact is, is that they know that they'll be able to acquire every hero if they keep playing long enough. That is that is the hope and the belief that you want to instill into a community. And I'm telling you, man, when a game finally like really understands these things and gets these things right in those areas, right? And they're not just kind of going along with the status quo that's being done in the genre. Dude, there's going to be some magic happening, hopefully, for that game. As long as they do other things right, too, as well. Uh, let's get to the next one. A question. Will you make it possible... To claim all alliance gifts with one tap, one click. <laughs> I, I love how people I love how they, they keep asking this. Uh, following feedback from players regarding alliance chests, we made related adjustments in previous updates. However, some players felt that the animation was too slow. After careful consideration, we have decided to retain the existing animation. However, we would like to ensure that players can enjoy the process of opening rare chests as much as possible. We are considering slightly increasing the speed of common and rare alliance chests in the future. More details will be available. And this is the thing. I get it, right? If you're going through the animations and you're watching them open, the idea is supposed to be like you're excited to see. But I think, and I think that can be true in some regards, but it's mostly true as it pertains to the beginning uh, of playing, right? Because in the beginning, you're probably more prone to be interested in, oh, let me see how this chest opens, etc. After you start, you know, probably after a couple days or after a week or two weeks, you're, you're at a point where it's like, okay... I just want to unlock everything and then be able to kind of go about it. I somewhat get that. Now, I am not opposed to having a one-tap click for opening all Alliance Gifts, right? And the reason I say that is because opening Alliance Gifts is not something that is really an activity in the game that you would spend time in, right? You, this is, you're just opening up resources essentially at that point. So for me... I, I'd be okay with them adding it because I just think that if you're going to have something in the game where you need to spend time to do, it should be more event or activity based. Okay. Uh, will you be increasing the current limit 256 chests on Alliance chest storage for offline players? Okay. Right. And we did something on this. We understand, right? We, we did a video on this. We did a suggestion as well as other people. I don't know how many votes that got. I have to go check. Uh, we understand that players would like to see an increase in Alliance chest storage limits while offline from V1.024 onwards. Storage for rare uh, and common Alliance chests has been increased to a maximum of 512. Okay, this is great. Um, now, I don't know if there's other types of chests outside of rare and common, right? Because they did specifically say that. I don't know why they just couldn't say all chests that you would see in the Alliance store uh, or Alliance chests. But this is nice that they're at least doubling the size. Right, so it's a small victory. 
Uh, even though we know when we did the numbers and we had some people that commented on that video that we did and some people said that you could get, I think, over 1,000 if you have an active alliance of 200 players, right? Especially if all those people are purchasing. So yeah, is this a small victory? Sure. Did we really win the war on this one? No, not yet. So, you know, again, we'll see how this plays out, but I very much believe, I uh, feel that we're going to probably end up getting more suggestions for increasing the limits at a later point, if not maybe right away. <laughs> uh, last question. Will you add relocation items to the merit store or make free or make uh, free talent resets, uh, uh, reset items available? Uh, we've received feedback from players lately regarding the addition of items. We are considering adding relocation items to the merit store and we'll notify you when we have further information. Talent reset items can currently be purchased from the store, and we have a plan to make them obtainable during future events, we'll let you know. Okay. I mean, listen, am I okay with them adding relocations to the store, you know, so people can kind of move around a little bit more? I mean, it's 50-50, right? Uh, I am, I'm not abhorrently against it, and I'm not incredibly for it. I, I think we just need to see a little bit more data on, you know, and, and again, I, I'd love to hear from some people out there as well. Do you think that it's a good idea to add them to the store? Maybe. My, 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 my devil's advocate side is more of like, okay, well, you know, what happens if, you know, there's too many that are added, maybe it's too much flexibility, there's not enough tactical choice because you can kind of move wherever you want, even though, yes, you might say like, yeah, we still want to get the most amount of PvP we can, so being able to kind of switch fronts also adds some tactical diversity, especially if you're fighting on multiple battlefronts. I mean, yeah, there are some things, right? If you're facing against rogue players, right, do you really want them to be able to move around as much in a home kingdom, especially once home kingdoms come out? That could be a detriment. I mean, again, you just, you have to really think this one through. Um... The other part I'll say is on the idea of making uh, free talent resets. My thing is just make the talent trees free to reset, right? We don't need items, nothing. Just make the whole thing free. Let people adjust as they as they will. And if they want to adjust in real time, let them adjust in real time. Let them have let them use their multiple uh, sets of talent trees and allow for them to just change it whenever they want, right? As long as the unit comes back, like the unit has to come back to the city, then you can change it and then go from there. So that's as simple as it is for me. We'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. That is going to do it for us this time around. As always, until next time, we'll catch y'all later.